be interesting to find out how he came to know Jesus. Has he mentioned that to you, given his testimony? Hmm. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, turn to Proverbs chapter 20. I like Proverbs because it's, uh, it's very practical. Yeah. It's, it's on my level, and I don't have very many high levels, so um, I like that. Um, as you're turning there, I wanted to read something to you. Uh, there was a little fella standing by the house, and the salesman walks up, to the door where the little boy is standing and says, Is your mother home? The little boy says, Yes, yeah, she's home. Scooting over to let him pass, and the salesman rang the doorbell and got no response. He knocked once, then again, still no one came to the door. Turning to the boy, the fellow said, I thought you said your mother was home. The kid replied, She is, but this isn't where I live. <laughs> do you ever have things like that happen to you? I mean, really odd situations. <laughs> you didn't ask if I lived here. <laughs> I got some trivia for you. Did you know there are two different men in the Bible named Jesus? How many of you knew that? There is. Did you know there are two different people in the Bible with the name Noah? And one of them was the woman. You learn things like that and when you're reading the Bible and it's interesting how that it uh, things come up. Uh, some of the names especially. Yeah. In, in the first five books of the Bible yeah. are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and some of them are just plumb funny. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Dodo. Dodo. Who would name their child Dodo? <laughs> anyway. Have you ever looked back especially in the beginning of the year. Because January seems to be the month where that we start up a New Year's resolution, right? Mm -hmm. But have you ever gotten there to January and maybe even the end of December, you're starting to think about it a little bit, and you're thinking, oh man, last year I said that I was going to do this. I didn't. Or I said that I was going to do that and clearly did not do that. Yeah. How many of you have ever been there? I certainly have. And I think that there's a reason for that. I think there's a reason and I think there's a solution uh, to helping us to not have to look back and do that anymore. Yeah. And the answer is in one word. Goals. Goals. Do you have any goals? Clear goals. Things that you would like to accomplish. Places that maybe you'd love to go to. Um... I was talking with Brother John just this morning and he has a, a, a goal to get out of debt, mm -hmm. which is an excellent goal that we all should have. Um, we have goals many times in our health. We should have goals in our spiritual walk yeah. with God. But we many times <clears throat> mistake a dream for a goal. They're not the same. Dreams, they come out of our mouth like this. One day I'm going to... Or they will sound something like this. Yeah, I need to do that. 
And then three days later, or a week later, a month, six months, or December's here again and we say it all over again. Yeah, I need to do that. Mm. Right? Yeah. Is goal setting a godly trait? Mm. Is it biblically mandated? We're going to find out tonight. What happens if I don't have any specific goals? One person said this, without a plan, you plan to fail. Proverbs 20 and verse 18 reads, Every purpose, which is a plan or goal, every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice, make war. Let's pray and then we'll continue. Father, I thank You for Your Word. Lord, it is living and it is powerful and we need Your Word. We need what message that You have for us tonight. And I pray that You would help us open our ears and our hearts. Lord, help us to learn the things that You have for us. And God, cause it to draw us closer to You. And Lord, help us to be more effective in Your kingdom because of it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Our ultimate goal ought to be to be more effective in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. Mm. We're not talking about heaven. We're talking about the kingdom of God. That's now. Okay? And in order to be effective in the kingdom of God, goals and plans have a major part in them. Jesus Himself said in John 9, 4, I must work the work of Him that sent Me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Jesus had an assignment. His assignment had urgency and a deadline. When I say I need to do that, First of all, it has no urgency nor a deadline. For me to say, uh, yeah, when, when I get the money, I'm going to do this. That has no urgency, nor does it have a deadline. There's no plan. There's no goal. Solomon, the wisest man ever, said in Ecclesiastes 9.10, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Why? For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. He had some urgency there, and he recognized that there is a deadline. In fact, there comes a time that which can no longer work. Jesus said the same thing. So we've got to get it done now. Give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening the axe, Mm -hmm. said Abraham Lincoln. In other words, if you got something that you'd really like to accomplish, spend some time planning your work. Mm -hmm. Plan what you're going to do. Break it down in easy, reachable steps. For, for you or I to say, well, I want to save up $20,000. We're all going to walk out of here defeated <laughs> because that sounds like such a large amount of money, and it is. But when you break it down into to months or weeks or even days, it begins to seem much more reachable. Amen. Without goals, you're going nowhere. That's why at the end of every year we get to thinking about it. We got we got we start thinking about the things that we committed to do or to change last January, and here we are in December, and what happened? Right. In fact, here we are in February, at the, towards the end of February, and the things that we've committed 
just a month ago has already fizzled out. Why? We don't have any plans. Jesus had a goal. He had an end result and it was Calvary. Solomon had a goal and it was to build the temple of God. God has a plan. He calls it salvation. So if Jesus and Solomon and God seems it's necessary to have a goal, a purpose, a plan, how come we don't? I mean, you're talking about God and His only Son, Jesus, and the wisest man who ever lived, Solomon, and they felt the importance of having a goal and a plan to reach that goal. Why don't we do that? It's odd, isn't it? Having goals is simply having a purpose. I looked up the word purpose in the dictionary and it reads like this, an aim or a goal. Determination or resolution to intend or resolve to perform or accomplish. How many of you are familiar with the ACE school curriculum? Okay, that's about half of us. In that school curriculum, every single day, the students are required to write down their goals on a goal sheet every single morning. That's the first thing they do. And as they finish math or English or whatever, they cross out the three pages or five pages or however many that they intended to do in that particular booklet. They cross it out. Then they move on to the next goal. Why do they do that? Because without goals, you're going nowhere. If the student started off in the morning saying, well, I'm going to get a lot of work done today. Oh, yeah? How'd that work out yesterday? Or the day before? I think distraction is one of the the devil's most favorite tools. Amen. Amen. So even though we want to get a lot of work done today... We get distracted. But when he has a goal sheet right there and stick it up in front of him all day long in class, it's kind of hard to forget what he's supposed to be doing. Okay? <clears throat> Goals not written down on paper are only good intentions. Those are the things that come out of our mouth like this. Yeah, I need to do that. Or I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take care of that tomorrow. Or I'm gonna get that done next next week. I've got a lot to do this week. Weeks pass, and we pe- walk past that item or that job that needed to be done, and we wonder what happened. Yeah. We didn't set a goal, and we didn't write it on paper. If that student in the ACE school said, well, I'm going to get three pages done in this pace, and I'm going to get four done in this pace, and I'm going to get 12 done in this one because I hate it and I want to get it over with, and he doesn't write it down, he could forget. If he doesn't put it up there in front of him, then he gets to doodling and he gets to... uh, brainstorming about what he's going to do after school and he gets to thinking about other things and all of a sudden it's 3 o'clock and he hasn't reached his goal. But by writing it down on paper and putting it up there in front of him, it's much easier to reach the goal. Even Jesus wrote his plan down on paper. Then he gave it to us. King David wrote over and over the things that he planned to do. For you and I to assume that we'll remember to do the things that need to be done is insane. 
Mm. Insanity is to believe that you can keep doing what you've been doing and yet get different results. Mm. I like how Tom Kimmel puts it. If you always do what you always did, then you'll always get what you always got. To get what you want, stop doing what isn't working. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Walt Disney coined that phrase. I don't know if he was a saved man or not. I don't think so, but I don't know that. One thing for sure, he has had a successful business. He learned this thing of how to get busy and how to set goals and so on and so on. <clears throat> Proverbs 20.18 remembers talking about having a purpose and getting counsel with that purpose. Don't set big goals by yourself. Sometimes that can be devastating. In other words, if I say to myself, you know what, I'm going to save $20,000 by May. (laughs) Guess what's going to happen in May? I'm going to be really discouraged. Real discouraged. I might need to get some help. I might need to seek some counsel on how to set this goal and what what kind of time frame I need to give myself in order to reach this goal and what kind of baby steps I need to reach this goal. Find someone who is successful in the area you want to be successful and get in their pocket. You want to love Jesus more and radiate His love better? Find someone who's good at that and talk to them. Spend time with them. You want to be a better soul winner? Find someone who is and spend some time with them. You want to acquire better health? Talk to Brother Phil. He still works out every day of the week. (laughs) He's doing something that a lot of 72-year-old people are not. There's a reason for that. He says he is successful here in this area, and if you want to learn what he's doing, talk to him. Yeah. Find out what he's doing. Do you want to uh, change your major in school, your occupation? Research it. Talk to people who do what you'd like to do. Get their input. Create a plan on how to get there. Radical change happens one step at a time. And without a plan, we'll never take steps. We will continue to look back and say, what happened? Why? I I really intended to save $20,000 and I don't even have a hundred bucks. What's going on with that? Being willing makes you able. Any unattempted remains impossible. Mm. If you have a dream to do something, turn it into a vision. A vision is more than a dream. A vision is a well-defined goal with a strategic plan of how to get there. But dreams seldom come to pass. Mm. Remember, without a plan, we plan to fail. A goal should scare you a little, but excite you a lot. Especially when you're working at it. Because you have a plan on paper. You've posted it somewhere and you've started checking off those small accomplishments. By the way, if the plan doesn't work, change the plan, not the goal. 
Sometimes our plan could be faulty. Many times it may be. But don't change the goal. The victory of success is half won when one gains the habit of setting and achieving goals. Ogmandino made that comment. How many of you know who Ogmandino is? Okay. He's the author of a book called The Greatest Salesman in the World, a New York Times bestseller, and president of Success Unlimited magazine. I don't know him. I don't know if he's a Christian or not. <clears throat> but he's learned this thing of setting goals and how to accomplish them. Mm-hmm. Now this is important. Not so that we can become wealthy one day, but so that we can be more effective in the kingdom of God. Amen. Because ultimately, when we're standing before Jesus, He is not going to ask us, did you ever save up $20,000? He may ask what you did with it. Yeah. He may ask your purpose for saving it up. But one thing for sure, He's going to want to know how many people you brought to heaven with you. Mm-hmm. He's going to want to know how many times you stooped to help somebody in need because He put them in your path to help them. Goal setting is a biblical principle. We are robbing ourselves of success in this life and especially the next one by not setting goals and creating a plan to reach those goals. I challenge you to create some goals, but I challenge you specifically to create one this week. Write it down, what your goal is, and then write down a plan to reach it. Now, if you need to talk to somebody, and by the way, you probably do. (laughs) What will cause you not to is pride. I can handle this. I ain't stupid. Mm. No, but we are ignorant. Yeah, we are. I mean, how many goals did we accomplish last year? Mm. We are ignorant. We do need help. Set one goal this week. Mm. Call somebody. Go on the internet or something and get some help to create a plan of attack on how to reach that goal. And I'm not saying that this goal needs to be accomplished before next Sunday. That's not what I'm saying. But set the goal this week. The goal may have an end by the end of this year. It could be uh, by the time you're such and such an age. But whatever the goal is, get some help to write it down and to set up a plan. <clears throat> what would happen if by some wild coincidence we all unbeknownst to each other set a goal that we were going to bring one person to church each month just one for the rest of the months out of this year that would be nine people One person a month. Now how would we accomplish that? How many people would we, would we have to actually invite to get them here? Or what if we had a goal of I'm going to witness, talk to someone verbally about Jesus once every two weeks. That would be two times a month in case you don't do that very often. And for those of you that do that every single day, maybe you need to put a different goal down there. Yeah. Three people per day. I don't know. We all have different levels here. Right. 
But we need to set some goals. And we need to figure out how we're going to reach those goals. And by the way, these goals of being a better soul winner or inviting people to church are important. But so is your health. Because if your health declines, then you can't even go out there and do that. Your goals to get out of debt, that's important. That's very biblical. Your goal is to have a better relationship with your husband, your wife, your children, your, your grandfather, whoever, Amen. your friend. Amen. That's important. That's biblical. How are we going to do it? We've got to create a plan. We've got to write it down. Set one goal this week. Don't stop there. Amen. But that's a good way to get started. Amen. Because according to Og Mandino, half the battle is won when we learn the process Mm -hmm. of setting a goal, creating a plan, and seeing it come to pass. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Thank You, Father, for Your Word. I do thank You for helping us. Lord, we need Your help. Father, we want to accomplish more for Your kingdom's sake. And I pray that You would help us to learn how to set goals, deadlines, and create plans to get to those goals. And Father, please help us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and turn to page 489.